Okay, shalom, shalom. Kwam yasa Allah, koholo yimla. Yahweh ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai ba Hashem, Rekachakudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of the Great Millstone who rule well that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water toward the Akim and Akwap that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments. Love you, Yahweh ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Jachana on the Waf just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And I uh, wanted to touch on this army recruiting. We're not recruiting. Uh, well, it is the army trying to recruit, and they're short. On um, they're missing their goals um, from all branches, and the tactics and slickery, slipperiness. Esau Edom being the cunning hunter that he is, you know the shit that he's trying to use to draw in, you know your children basically, um, the young men, which they're they're pretty much gonna go into a mode of um, drafting at some point in the game because. Nobody wants to go. And this is clear proof right here. This is an article in NPR. It says, who's in the army now? A pitch switch aims to get more military recruits. Now, and these are Edomites. And, and, and really, in reality, they're going to be pushing towards getting you um, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And a lot of these immigrants that's coming over the border and all that shit, they're going to, who knows how they're going to do that. They may offer them. You know, um, citizenship, just come. You may have to serve three, four tours in the damn army or whatever the case may be. And as soon as you finish those tours up, if you're still alive, you know, you may have a leg or something blown off or a chunk of your head gone. But in the meanwhile, you're free to stay in America. You're, in a, you're a citizen. But it's going to get to a point of recruits, man, at some point, because nobody is trying to go to the American army. Because that media, really social media and um, the Internet is really killed. Um, Esau's propaganda game hunt when it comes to that because see back in the days they would print something in the newspaper and, and, and these dumbass Edomites would just go for it you know but now they can't just do that because there's too much information that internet anybody can go online and look up stuff and see stuff and they're hearing stuff they're on all these different social media um, sites and they can see that okay um, this shit is not what they said it was. <laughs> it's straight up. See, back in the days, they used to be able to fool people and trick people into getting it. A lot of people was fooled into going to a military. And then once they got there, they think, hey, that's why you had a lot of people going AWOL. A lot of people, you know, um, running and, and, and trying to escape. Matter of fact, you just had this guy, the so-called black guy. I think his last name is King. Or is his first name King? The so-called black guy that ran into North Korea. He ran into North Korea. You know what I'm saying? Basically trying to escape the abuses of the American army, so to speak. I'm not sure all the details, but the, I mean, come on, man. You running into North Korea out of all places to escape the American army? That says something wrong with your shit, for real. Anyway, let's get some of this. St. Paul, Minnesota, Staff Sergeant Joshua Spearman grips the metal bench and eyes the crowd through his dark <laughs> wraparound sunglasses. He's a brawny soldier in a black T-shirt, his left arm covered in tattoos. See, that's that look. That's that, 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 that tantalizing look. He's watching the endless stream of humanity flow past him at the Minnesota State Fair. So he's camped out at the State Fair trying to recruit people. All right? Families with strollers, couples with just one stuffed animals, elderly fairgoers in uh, motorized wheelchairs. Soon his eyes, soon he eyes his prey. A cluster of young men. He tosses out his sales pitch. <laughs> hey, this is how he's getting down, though. He's always done this, but that shit is not working like that no more. And then you got these lazy-ass Edomites. They, they're not patriot. These Edomites are not patriotic like that. Even these ones, you think that these ones that's running in behind Trump, like how they running in behind Trump, will be the first ones signing up since they want to make America great again. They're not even signing up. Come on, man. But you know who they're doing? They're throwing a pitch at you so-called blacks doing them NFL games. While you watching primetime, you watching goddamn Colorado get their asses kicked because primetime is pulling in millions of viewers. They, they, they're, 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 they're posting those, 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 those damn um, army commercials towards you. Come on, join the army. <laughs> Come join us. Look at all the benefits that you can get. All that trickery and all that fucking lying, man. You see? It says, hey, uh, uh, it says, soon he eyes his prey, a cluster of young men. He tosses out his sale pitch. Hey, you know what's good? Eating all the fair snacks and come work it off. 
I'm, I'm so serious, dude. Deadlift challenge, see? He trying to slip, tr trying to, you know, they're trying to, you know, playing with your fucking mind. It says the guys in the, gr the, gr the, guys in the crowd grin at him, but shake their heads. They're like, hell no, nah, man, we all right. It says no. He says no. Pull-ups, nothing. Sp Spearman presses. Win your girl a t-shirt, man. It's like the ultimate fair story. <laughs> Hey, man, hey, I'm surprised he didn't see. He, he could have said something like, win your man a T-shirt with the way today. You're, you're recruiting uh, 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 A, B, C, D, E, F, G people. Your whole, that, that whole military thing is off, man. You know you losing when, when you're re recruiting like that, man. You're giving them the opportunity to have sex change operations. A lot of them, that's the only reason why they're going. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go and do my tour, my two tours, and then I'm going to get my little $200,000 to get my sex change operation. I'm going to get me some breasts and I'm going to go and be a dancer in Las Vegas or some stupid shit. Come on, man. <sighs> Spearman has his work cut out for him because the army is struggling to fill his ranks. Last year, it was 15,000 soldiers short. This year um, is better, but still short by some 10,000. Two big reasons it hasn't met recruitment targets. The army is in a war for talent with strong economy offering good jobs and benefits, and the pandemic kept recruiters out of high schools, prime locations for finding future soldiers. And that's where they, they hang out at. I can remember when I was in school, they have a desk right at the front, right at the damn principal's office. They used to have a desk. Sign up for the army, you know, sign up for this or sign up for that. You know, they hitting, you know, they after you as soon as you hit ninth grade, as soon as you hit the high school, you're a freshman year. they like, oh, yeah, we're going to get at you in a couple of years. You just stay fit. You go and play sports and you hit the weight room and stay strong for until we're ready to call you. See, that shit is not working like that no more. Here you go. You got trillions of dollars to spend on war shit, war um, equipment, but you're, you're paying your soldiers n nothing. And then they don't don't think that they don't know that the veterans are being treated shitty here. You got guys that went over there, got their damn legs blown off, sitting in a wheelchair with a cardboard uh, uh, piece of paper talking about, um, you know, I'm hungry. Uh, you know, uh, uh, can you spare a dollar or some stupid shit? And here you go. You done went and fought for this country that supposedly have the greatest economy in the world. You shouldn't be seeing no shit like that. The least paid people here in America that, 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 that are the most important are your teachers and your military. I, I got to just put it out there. And there's a scripture that talks about that, man. You know, um, in the, um, the Apocrypha, I can't think exactly where it's at. But basically what it's going off into, roughly paraphrasing, is hey, it, it's, a, it's a foul thing to treat your military servants like shit. You see? People are seeing that. People are riding by people. And you know what? These Americans, they ride by these veterans every single day while they're sitting on the goddamn freeway, on the highway, on the side of the road in their wheelchair, just trying to get something to eat. Mainly, most of them trying to get something to drink. Hell, a lot of them trying to just get um, um, some, some opioids to leave this world, to just, you know, just get a, 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 a you know, just to just leave the, the, their, their state of mind for, for, for time being. I see them all the time. And you know what? Esau roll up, on, roll up at the light. Don't even glance over at him. Don't even look at him. Don't, don't, don't even acknowledge him. Where's that? Oh, well, thank you for serving your country. <laughs> Where's that at? You see? Okay, so it says. And as you can see, they got these challenges and stuff like that. They're at the fair. And this is how, this is how far they've fallen as far as, um, you know, trying to get recruits. But let me get a quick scripture real quick. It's going to the Apocrypha real fast. It's a beautiful thing, too. And, hey, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, don't let them draw you into their, their, their military, man. You better, you better Muhammad Ali it. <laughs> you better, hey, you should be fighting your hardest to stay away from that man's military these days. You better be fighting like hell because to, uh, you go over there and you get to scrapping with, uh, uh, with this man, you know, for this man's military. And matter of fact, he's trying to recruit you actually to fight against the Lord because that's the ultimate fight in the end. That's the ultimate fight in the end. They're going to be trying, they're going to be fighting against the Lord and the Lord going to tear their asses apart and you're going to get torn apart too if you join the military. It's that simple, man. Let's go back here to Ecclesiastes chapter 25. 
verse 7, it reads, There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. See, you're, you're, you're witnessing the fall of, of America. We're witnessing the fall of our enemy that have gone throughout the earth and treacherously taken over lands for centuries, man. Now, all of a sudden, it's at a point where that last hoorah is on the run for their asses. Because this place is through. This place is through. And like I said, the, the very place where the, that they're trying to recruit, they play those recruiting commercials during those NFL games for a reason. The few, the proud, the Marines. You know all those dumbass commercials? They got them jumping out of the helicopters and shit, hanging off the side of a, 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 a boat. You know, he's popping out of the ocean. Looking all heroic and shit. Hey, look, man, that, them, that, them days is over with. Jake, hey, these, hey, these the youth of, this, of today, man, they not going for that. They not going for that, man. So that's how we know that Esau, eventually what he's going to do is he's going to start to recruit them. I mean, he's going to start to draft them. So like you. Yeah, so let's get that again. Um, Ecclesiastes 25 and 7, also known as the Book of Sirach. 1611 King James Bible, there be nine things which I have judged in mine heart to be happy. On the tenth I will utter with my tongue, a man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. And that's what we're witnessing, man. So all praises to Yahweh Bashim, I was shy for that. And um, like I said again, man, they're they're gonna eventually start to draft. They're gonna eventually start to draft. And and, and the men that they're gonna put on the front line. The ones that they never cared about are you going to be you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the uh, disposable ones. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're definitely going to um, put you out there to uh, lose your life before they put their own out there to lose theirs, man. So just be circumspect, man. Understand that. See, this right here is all the sneakiness of Esau Edom. He's, he, he's trying to, you know, he's got, they got a setup out here. For people to come through and, you know, it's like this challenge. Come win your girl an army t-shirt. Yeah, right. Come do some pull-ups. How many deadlifts can you do? You know, because, you know, that's that's like a, um, it, it, it appears into the mind of men. You know what I'm saying? To be challenging. You know, men are, are challengers. You know what I'm saying? They, they somewhat, look how strong I am. You see? And this is what this man is doing. Right? It says, um, behind... Behind Spearman is a small grass lot with a few pop-up canopy tents, a pull-up bar, and some weights for deadlifts. A Humvee has its doors propped open. It's all designed to lure in prospects. What did I just say? Finally, college student Andrew Magnuson takes the bait. He's a hulking guy with a Minnesota t-shirt and a crown of reddish curls. He nails the deadlifts 20 times and gets an army t-shirt. But the army doesn't, it says, but the army doesn't get him. It's not for me, he says. I know that much. I don't know. I don't like fighting. So here you go. You got this big ass hulking Edomite, you know, that should be glad to fight for his country. Should be glad to fight for the, the, the spot that they stole. And here he goes talking about, oh, I don't like fighting. A big ass, you know, because that's what um, Esau has, uh, you know, produced in this country. A bunch of big ass, uh, uh, effeminate men, man. They don't do nothing but sit around and just eat, man. And, and just, <laughs> that's it. Motherfuckers don't do nothing but eat. That's it. That's it, man. Don't want to do nothing else. It says, but the army doesn't get him. It's not for me. He says, I know that much. I don't know. I don't like fighting. And his friends, they're not buying the pitch either. So see, Esau is not going for, because you know these are Edomites. These are not so-called black black guys in no goddamn Minnesota fair. <laughs> the hell out of here. It says, um, he says, so have you guys ever thought about the army? Ask Sergeant Robert Peterson. Petteran? Not exactly, says one. When someone says army, what's the first thing that pops into your head? He asks them. War, says one of the young men. And he got it right. You see? See, here go the Edomites right here. I knew they was Edomites. Well, you know, it's not a skin color thing. You know what I'm saying? Because there are um, Israelites that look like this. You know what I'm saying? But generally, these are Edomites. You know. Here you go right here. Petteran pushes on trying to downplay the notion of war. Make the army sound like a, a regular job. Something they can easily fit into their lives. 
That's a part-time option, he says. You only do the Army one week a month, two weeks during the summer, but we'll pay you for your college room and board. See, there, there's a pitch, man. So let me grab a quick scripture real quick, man. You got to, you, hey, you got to, matter of fact, you know, since I was there, let's just go back into it. 12, um, Ecclesiastes 12 and 10. It says, never to trust thine en enemy. Never trust thine enemy. For like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching. See, that's what that, what that, that, um, that sergeant basically done. He humbled himself. He went crouching. He's like, oh, no, no, no. It's not all about war. You know? All you have to do, you can do it part time. You come, you know, this just a couple of times out of the year. And hey, we pay for your room and board in college. That's the pitch. That's the 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 um the, the crouchingness right there. That's the, you know, the humbling of, of himself. Let's get that again. It says, though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass and thou shalt know that his rust have, has not been altogether wiped away. See, he's telling you that shit. You thinking that you're going to be, you know, all right, well, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it is a little bit hard for my parents to pay for my college right now. You know, I can go and get some skills. I can, you know, uh, start a family. And they they, they selling you on, on the pitch, crouching and, and, and slumbering down, you know, to get you. But as soon as they get you, the hook is in you. Ah, gotcha. As soon as you sign your, line, your name on that line, gotcha, bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> As the old Dave Chappelle would say, gotcha, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Now, now you, you stuck. Now you're, you know, your property of the U.S. Army. And it's not like you're property, you know, you're not property of the U.S. Um, a anyway, because all of us are actually property of the U.S. You know, that's where your social security number and your birth certificate and all that stuff comes in at. But there are certain things that you can sign contractually where your ass is, you know, you really like, all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm a part of this. Now, you're going to either do your part or your ass is going to jail. And with fines. You see what I'm saying? They're going to, they, they for damn sure going to take you to jail. Because they'll take you to jail if they drive. If, if they send out a draft notice to your house and you don't show up on that date, they're coming to look for you. <laughs> they're coming, they coming to get you, man. They're going to find out, well, well why didn't you come? You get to talking about, oh, no, no, I ain't with that. Oh, all right. You don't want to fight for us. You don't want to fight for this country. You're going directly into these jail cells, buddy. And that's that, man. But you have to watch out for stuff like this because this is him crouching. You, the scripture says to never trust thine enemy. Because this right here, it, this right here is a complete trap. Didn't we tell you that Esau, Edom, is a cunning hunter? Matter of fact, let's, let's go off into that real quick. Esau is a cunning hunter. This is cunning hunting. He's setting a trap. He's at a fair. <laughs> this man is at a fair with all the trinkets, you know, the little shiny things set up, you know, and he's trying to um, seduce your children. Well, we, we, they're grown men, you know what I'm saying? But in America, you know, 17 to 18, they act like fucking toddlers anyway. So they, you might as well consider them to be children. You know, they're not um, breeded to be men, man, here, man. Yeah, fucking 18, 21. It's, 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 it's men here in this country, man. 30, 35, 40, living in their in they parents' basement, man. Still fussing about they're out of cereal and shit like that. So this, this place is through, man. But this is, um, let's get that Genesis. 25 and verse um, 27. And it says, and the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter. A man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And that's Esau. He's a cunning hunter. And as you can see right here, you can clearly see the shit that he's saying. Look, look at the trap. You at a county fair. People just dare the man to just blow off some steam. They just dare man with their children. Probably the first thing that they could actually afford. You know what I'm saying? Because fairs, they, they didn't got expensive too. But you know what I'm saying? They're not as expensive as trying to go to a damn sea world or trying to go to um, Disneyland or something. So you got people there, man, they're just trying to just spend some time with their loved ones, spend some time with their family, and here your, your sneaky, crafty ass go. You there trying to entrap their children to come and join your murderous, bloody ass army, man. That's that, that's the that's the that's this is how we know who this man is. He shows himself. Matter of fact, there's that scripture that talks about um let's go off into um Psalms 64 and 8 that comes to mind by the spirit here. 
Or I'm in 68. 64 verse 8. And it reads, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. So th this is an example of them making their own tongue to fall upon themselves. And, and, and they're trying to be sneaky, but people are seeing all through it. Even their own people. These, the, these guys are walking through there like, no, nope, uh-uh, no, nope, uh nope. we already know what's up, bro. You're not getting us. The one guy, he stopped for, the, you know, and do his, show off his muscles. He's like, ah, nah, not for me neither. <laughs> so uh see people are starting to spot out who esau is man he's the damn devil that the bible speaks of and people are starting to realize that even his own his own kind okay it says um let's get what this guy says again he says there's a part-time option he says you only do the army one week a month two weeks during the summer but we'll pay for your college room and board but they all say, I'll pass. Army surveys echo their hesitation. Many don't want to join because they fear getting wounded or killed. Even though the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq are long over, or they don't want to leave home. So the army has come up with a new marketing technique with an old slogan. Be all you can be. And here's their damn commercial. And this is right here. It's pretty much about what you'll see. And, um, you know, a lot of these, you know, Halftime NFL games in between commercials and shit. Your pizza commercial, you know, your your baconator and whatever the hell else they're trying to sell you. In the meanwhile, they're trying to get you, you know, get all that that fat off your ass when they bring your ass into the um, recruit you and have you out there running 20 miles a day with and doing push-ups at three in the morning. <laughs> anyway, Salakia, it says for those who want to join the army, they may not make the cut. Some say they're at least thinking about the army, including 16-year-old high school girl. God damn, that's all y'all got? A 16-year-old high school girl named Alexis, who will have to wait a year or two. A recruiter nearby overhears her and swoops in to get her information, including her Instagram handle. Keeping in touch is key. See? This is, this is, how, this is how sad this shit is. You overhear a 16-year-old girl, you sound like a goddamn um, pedophile or something, man. You swooping in on a 16-year-old girl. You overhear her conversation. Oh, well, let me get your Instagram. Get the hell out of here, man. This is how this this shows you how trash this place has become, man. It says one senior officer tells NPR the army is embarking on what he calls high school blitz to find more recruits like her. Now that the pandemic is over, still officials expect the lagging recruiting climate will continue for some time. As a result, the army will likely have to trim its forces and bases around the country. And they're trying to reel in the next generation, too. Look at this, look at this man. And this is how they're going to get them. Look at these little kids. They got them there. These, these, these little babies. Well, I ain't going to say babies, but, you know, they're little kids. And they got you, you, you standing around there. And they look like a, a so-called black woman back there, too. Got them playing video games on a goddamn army laptop. And that's how they see that's that sneakiness. That's why we say to tell you, um, you know, to beware of um, Esau, man. The scripture says to, to beware of him. Never trust thine enemy. Though he go crouching and humbling himself, it says to take good heed. Beware of him. And it's saying that for a reason. So now when you go off into it, let me see, let's go back. Because if you don't listen to that, to that, then you're setting yourself up, man. Uh, what's that? Twelve. Let's 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 get the rest of that. Let me just start back from ten. It says, um, "Never trust thine enemy, for like his iron rusteth, so of his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, there you go. Look at us. We you know we got the fun games for the kids. See, they're they're setting the stage for your child to remember that growing up." Those kids that was playing those, had the joysticks in their hands, sitting there playing the video games and shit. Those kids couldn't have been no more than like seven years old or so. So Esau, he had the your kids young as hell. It says, though he humble himself. Oh, it's all in good fun and games. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. You're going to know. He gonna show that true color, like ta-da! Now your ass is in a bunker, you know, or your ass is in a um a trench, 
you know, with shit flying over you and you, 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 you witness and your man's arm just got blew off. You see, but it all started off with that soft speech. Oh, man, you don't have to worry about it. There is no war. The hell out of here, man. It World War Three done already started. OK, it says, set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. So hey, that, that's what's going to eventually happen. They're going to remember like, man, I, my mom and them told me, my grand, they told me. Because see, even a lot of those patriotic grandfathers and fathers that fought, they like, man, look, don't do it, son. I've been there. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to keep their promises. And that's Esau. He's a fucking liar, man. This is the point. Verse 13. Who will pity a charmer? That is bitten with a serpent or any such as come not wild beast. Who's going to pity you? The, the 16 year old girl. You turn 17, 18. Your ass. You headed to their army. Who's going to pity you when your ass is over there being. Matter of fact. Being raped and ravaged by your own men. Your own comrades. That's a big thing in the American army right now too. They're starting. It, all the stories are starting to come out. That the men are in there. Um, um, you know. Uh, come on, what do you think is going to happen when you have men that haven't been around a woman and here you go, you the only woman in the platoon? Get the hell out of here. That's stupid as hell, man. That's a, that's a, that's, that's, that's a graping ready, waiting to happen. 25, 30, 40, thirsty, 50 thirsty dudes just looking at you. It's only two or three of y'all and they just looking at y'all. You there sweating, tits bouncing. Cheeks bouncing in, 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 in those 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 fatigue pants, man. Them tight ass fatigue pants. And, and you joining this man's army. What, what do you think you're going to do if you get caught up uh, um, out in, in, in war, man? They're going to ravish your ass. You see what I'm saying? So who will pity your charmer? Who's going to pity that person? Who's going to pity you when you're being told, hey, look, man, don't do it. This man is not who he's saying he is. His track record proves it. He's showing you. Look at the veterans that are on the streets. All those people, man, and, you know, um, didn't just come back and was doped out. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and <laughs> you know, some of those people, hey, they, 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 they tried their hardest when they came back here. They had jobs. They worked. Shit didn't work out for them. VA wasn't giving them what they needed. You know, come on, man. America don't give a shit about no, they, 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 they use you and abuse you and then toss your ass to the side. And then they come through and they get your next generation. So y'all better beware. <laughs> we give look at this, man. This shit is retarded. I wish I could let me, yeah, here we go. Look, let's zoom in. You know, zoom in. Look at that. Got your look. And this is a, a so-called black woman. Looking like it. Here trying to recruit your goddamn babies, man, to come off and, and fight for this man's murderous ass war. This Esau right here, though, Esau look like he ready for it, though. He, he recruit your own kids. Recruit your own kids. Well, here you go, though. Like I said again, here you go. Go Army. They at the they at the fair, man. The county fair. They at the county fair, man, trying to recruit people. It says a young boy works a handheld remote under the guidance of a recruiter. He maneuvers a small track Army robot. See, and that's how they get him. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> it says... He renewers a small track, tracked army robot around a series of plastic highway cones using a monitor to stimulate what it's like to control these in the field. The boy is already a pro. It's, it's, it's basically a video game. See? That's what you saw. Look at this. This is what they're doing. The, the, the kids is on, 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 a, on, a, on a computer system, and they're looking at the computer screen, and they're, and they're remotely... Um, I'm riding around these little small tanks right here, man. See, it's a clever device getting the idea in their heads early. See that? He's telling on himself. He's telling you what he's doing to your children. He's telling you that. As a matter of fact, I believe back in the days, the very first, like your Call of Duty, before, you know, all these video games became all expensive and became all, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, a big phenomenon, so to speak. The Army was the first ones that had video Army video games first, man. And they wasn't for you playing them at home. <laughs> they was for, you know, um, um, getting their, their, their military ready. 
then they let it go. Now you can play Call of Duty. You can play, um, you know, all these different, um, you know, um, army games and shit. And it gets your children used to the, the point of, you know, shooting, killing, you know, and not really actually being, being there. But they're going to put some boots on the ground, too. Somebody got to go in and, and set up in certain areas, right? And if there's some boots on the ground, you best believe they sending you Jake in there first. Now see, this right here is very crafty right here. This is who you're dealing with. You're dealing with Esau, the cunning hunter, man. It's basically a video game. It said it's a clever device getting the idea in their heads early. Because one thing we heard repeatedly from the young people who were interested is just something I've always wanted to do. See? But even if you're ready to sign up, you might not make the cut. A recent Pentagon study found less than one quarter of America's youth would qualify for military service without a waiver because they're overweight, have criminal records and mental and physical health problems. Why? 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 Why is all that going on? Because you're living in Esau Edom's kingdom. He's the creator of his own demise. <laughs> He's the creator of his own shit, man. It says, so how is the military trying to make up for those lost numbers? They're increasingly turning to who recently arrived in the United States and hiring more immigrants. I just said that. Wow. They're hiring more immigrant recruits like Sergeant First Class Noella Laxon to talk to them. Laxon's family from the Philippines. She's standing there by a card cable covered with brochures, lanyards, and dog tags. Most of my applicants are immigrants. I kind of relate to them, she says with a laugh. A lot of them just go, just got here from Mexico or different countries. I'm, look at that shit, man. I didn't even read all the way through the, the story, man. I didn't get this far, but I just said that. All these men that are supposedly coming across the border right now, they're going to be like, hey, you want to stay here? Yeah, America, gracias. <laughs> gracias, gracias. You see, all these ones that they showing you on these damn trains and all this other shit passing through the water. Their wives are going to be like, and mamas and stuff. Well, yeah, we can bring your mom, your, your grandmother, your, you know. Really? All you have to do is serve two tours. Esau been a lie to your ass and send your mom and them right back to where the fuck they came from. Your ass is in a trench somewhere wondering where they at when you if you make it back. See, this is that craftiness, though. It says she'll tell them how her own story to put them at ease. It says I got here when I was 17, she says, joined when I was 22 and goes on to talk about how the army got her through college. That's all the crafty council right there. That's all that um that 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 um. Man, look, this man is not to be trusted, man. He's clearly showing you th this is this man been doing this for a long time. This is his game plan. But see, what he doesn't understand is it's not working no more. People can see it now. They're like, oh, nigga, we see you. <laughs> Esau don't think nobody see him, but everybody like, dude, what are you doing? You looking stupid. We see you. We know how you get down. See? Oh, man. It says it also helps that she's a woman. No, it don't. Hey, look, women are not supposed to be in, in no goddamn armies, man. That's not scriptural. There's no women in no, no fucking militaries. Nowhere in the scriptures, man. And all these people will tell you that they're Christians. Matter of fact, these, these, these army recruit these guys, these recruiters, they'll tell them, oh, yeah, we love Jesus. Matter of fact, they almost are like um, car salesmen, man. They'll tell you anything to get the sale. They'll use anything that you say or ask and say and, and, and use it to get you to sign the dotted line. That's all that they're that they're um, um, that's their sole purpose to get you to sign. They a lot of asses off to you, man. I'm telling you, beware of these people, man, because it's coming. It says it helps also that she's a woman. She says most of the applicants are female. I can relate. She says, OK, all right. Yo, all right. You know this place is through, man, when, 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 when your, your majority of your applicants are females, man. Come on, bro. That don't even make no sense. It says because a lot of people will tell you you can't do this or that certain stuff. See, there they go with that shit. That's another um, sneaky ass ply that Esau uses for the women. See, see, he has destroyed you women. He has destroyed your households. He has destroyed your, 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 your motherly instincts, your, your feminine um, um, sense of being. 
He is. He he told you that you can be like a man. Now, a lot of these women that you seeing, you know, that's running a household by themselves, they'll tell you differently. They like, oh man, shit, shit, shit. You get to talking to some of these women that's on the dolo. <laughs> This man has created nothing but chaos and, and, and got you women out here all alone. So when shit hits the fans, you're going to see. You're going to see. And then what men that you do have, those sons that you do have around you, those uncles that you do have around you, even that baby daddy that you do have around you that's coming by every week or so, two months, whenever the hell he's showing up, you ain't going to even get to see them. Why? Because they ass is going to be somewhere overseas in a trench. And the scriptures talks about there's going to be a lot of widows out here. A lot of well ain't going to be going on. Roughly paraphrasing. It's going to be a lot of widows out here. I'm telling you, man, this man is wicked as hell, man. And these congressmen, these presidents, they're not going to fight. You think, come on, they're not sending their sons to fight. They sending you low class motherfuckers to go fight. See? It says, um... She says, I can relate, she says, because a lot of people would tell you, you can't do this or that, certain stuff. So I tell them, are you going to let people tell you what you can and can't do? There you go. About 16% of the army is now female. A number of that keeps edging up. Women tend to be the higher quality recruit, score higher on tests, and have fewer brushes with the law. Of course. And now all ground combat jobs are open to women. So the army is pushing that in some of his, his ass, including women spotting a target inside of Abram's tank. I'm telling you. Hey, this man, boy, ooh wee. This man is the ultimate fucking liar, man. He's the ultimate hunter. He has hunted out you women. He has set the trap for you women. And this is his trap. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Uh, you know, I, I want to watch. Let's let's see if we can get this to play here, where he's trying to dupe you women into coming into his army. Thirty-one seconds to lock you. Oh, whoa! All oh, them lessons going up, Salakia. I think I kind of lost my connection for a sec there. Anyway, let's read on for a second. I'm going to end out in a minute here, too, though. It says, but that all leads to another hurdle. And recruiting army surveys show some 20% of women questioned were wary of joining, saying they'll be discriminated against. Beyond that, sexual harassment and assault are still a, a per persistent problem. Last year, the army saw a 9% drop in, in reports of sexual assault. But the year earlier, there was 27, a 26% increase in reports involving soldiers. But Lieutenant Colonel Christine, Kristen Grace, who commands all the recruiters, played that down. See, of course they're going to play it down. <laughs> you know, that, that's another, uh, you know, this man is crafty as fuck, man. It, it, that's why the scripture says never to trust thine enemy. He's not going to tell you the truth. It says, though, he humble himself. And that's why that, it's a command there. To, he's, the Lord is saying, take good heed. Beware of him. He's not saying that for nothing. You know, a snake is real slithery, man. You, hey, you watch the Nature Channel, even with certain predator, you know, you see animals, you see lions, you see, you know, certain animals stalking the prey. They're easing up in stealth. That's Esau, man. He stealthily moves in on you, man. And then once he hits you, he got you. It's a wrap. You can't get out of it. Right? It says, for me personally, I've never experienced it. Of course, well, you might not be an attractive. She may not be that attractive like that. It don't even make no difference, though. You know, if she if she has experience, she's not going to tell you that shit. But it's still a concern. One possible recruit, Harmony Cook, says her friends are worried about it when she talks about joining the military. They say, like, I'm going to be treated more differently than the guys, she says, or like the guys are going to be intimidating or everything. And I might not be able to stand a chance, but she wants to join and become a medic and get a fifty thousand dollar bonus. See, there's the man's trinkets. His shiny things, you know, that's that carrot before the, uh, you know, before the, the cart. You know, he's trying to lure you into um, joining his shit, man. I'm telling you, this man is, 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 is out of control, bro. It says, so for Harmony is one of some 25 potential recruits here who have requested a formal interview. Another 750 have 
ask for more information. Okay, they think the numbers are pretty good, but see, they have to get in there and sneakily get you. Here you go. You got more women. That's that's that's, and it's about the money for the women. They, hey, you know, you you see what, why she wanted to go. It's about the the money for women. Women are really looking like you know, I, you know, I just want a career. I want to be able to take care of you know. I just want to just shit. Basically, women, ah, they don't really want to take care of no fucking families. It's not about that, you know. It's not about that. But some of them, you know, they may have a little boy or a little girl, you know, and, and their parents are willing to take care of the child until they go and handle that and do that. And they may not make it back. Now, grandparents are taken care of, you know, and it is what it is. It says the tough guy approach is going away. And while the army is plugging personal development today in services and service and playing down combat to attract female recruits, that tough guy approach isn't totally going away. It just depends on who's listening. Spearman has pulled over college student Landon Arrens from, uh, from Iowa, who says he's leaning towards the Marines because he wants to see some combat. And so somebody, hey, all right, well, you still got a couple of them that still want to see some things. I've had three deployments with the Special Forces Group. I've never seen a Marine out there fighting, man, Spearman says in a rapid fire delivery. There, see, he's see, and they're fighting for recruits in each branch. Why don't they get together and say, hey, well, you know what? Why isn't it just a whole? Why is the U.S. Army fighting for recruits over the Marines or the Marines fighting over recruits over the, the Air Force or Air Force fighting over recruits? That shit don't make no sense. Aren't you all one? But well, even there's a separation even with that in this man's country. That shit is crazy. What is the, that, that Matthew 12 and 25 talks about a kingdom cannot stand. A house cannot stand. If Satan is divided against Satan, how can this kingdom then stand? This man is divided even amongst his military. They fighting for recruits in each um, um, branch. Stupid, man. This man is not going to win. Anyway, it's, yeah, that was pretty much about it. We was about at the end of it. It says there's a force on force conflict type people. You want to be in the fight. Our Green Berets are out there in the fight our army rangers are out there in the fight Arenz is still reluctant he's still in college and and he and wrestles but they don't pay you to wrestle spearman counters Arenz tells him he has um student loans that sucks man that sucks real bad says spearman who points to college assistance for those willing to sign up uh, so lock you. i wrote he says i wrote a two hundred and fourteen thousand dollar check to a high school girl last year Get the fuck out of here, right? And Arenz continues to, to hesitate. Spearman pulls over one of his colleagues, Captain Tyler Owen, to seal the deal. I'm telling look, these people are fucking predatory as hell. Here you go, you got a young man. Well, he's in college. Who knows? He might be old enough to drink. But then again, maybe not. Here you go, you in this country. They can recruit you at 18 years old, but you can't have a fucking drink until you're 21, legally. So and then they'll still call you a child or you're still uh, considered to be children. So if you're considered to be children, why is this man predatorially, you know, trying to, you know, basically kidnap this man? Basically, <laughs> what seems like to me, he's pulling somebody else in to seal the deal. I'm telling you, they just like some corrupt ass car salesmen, man. Used car salesmen at that. OK, it says, um. He's also a paratrooper like myself, and he's also an infantryman, Spearman tells Arenz. So this could be your goal. Spearman just might have another recruit. I got you on Instagram, he tells Arenz. You got my number, man. Reach out. Let's make a difference. See? They get to talking to you like they cool. We all buddy, buddy. Get the fuck out of it, man. Hey, look, you listen to this man you want to. And this is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let them so-called white people go fight their own wars. They stole this place. Let them fight for it. Don't let these people sneakily tell you, oh, well, you could, you know what? If they get to talking to you about how, talking about you, a, a fucking $214,000 check, which I doubt. You get to telling you, talking about we'll pay for your college. Ain't gonna be no damn college. You go over there and get your goddamn brains blown off, your, a chunk of your head blown off. How you going to college? Or your dream, and then at the same time too, America is not gonna last long enough for you to go there and come back.
I, you know, I, you, <laughs> that's me speaking as a man, but I don't believe America's gonna last that long, buddy. You're not gonna make it back, man. This is gonna be some, look, it's gonna be ongoing until the Lord comes. It says, a ranch walks away and Spear, Spearman turns to Owen. Once this possible new recruit is out of, out of earshot, Spearman turns to the colleague, smiling. The ranger insignia, with all his prestige and grit, was helpful. Had to flex that fucking ranger tab off your real quick, sir. See? That's how they get down, man. Anyway. Just wanted to just touch on this um, this, this for a hot sec. Well, let me just grab one more script. I'm going to be out. Never trust Esau, man. Esau is not to be trusted. We tell you over and over and over again, man. His track record is too fucked up. You can see it through his track record. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. It says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, you have to, you have to understand that one of his main devices is he's a cunning hunter. He, he's, he's, he's expert at setting traps. That whole thing, as far as you setting up at a goddamn county fair, that's a trap. But he's an expert at that. Then he's an expert at, at, at slithering that tongue, man. That, 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 that double-minded fucking tongue of his, man. He's telling you one thing, but, not, but in the back of his mind, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we got to get this fucker. All we got to do is to get him to sign on the line. Next thing you know, you crying for your damn mama, man. You crying for your daddy. You trying to come home. You didn't tell me all this. <laughs> They're not going to want to hear that shit. And like I said again, you just, you just, hey, these commercials though, we already know how they're going to get now with these, these commercials. Oh, Salaki, I done got rid of it. But anyway, we, we, the point is made, but check out some of these, um, these commercials, these army recruit commercials that they're starting to show. Hey, them things look like real movies. Them, them shits is entertaining. It make you want to go. And there could come a point where now what happened with Russia and Ukraine just before that little shit went down over there, before they started um, fighting, hey, um, those Ukrainians was trying to run. They didn't want to go to war, but they had it up to like, I think it was like 60 years old. If you was able to, to hold on to a gun at 60 years old, then they was, hey, your ass, would you had to stick around or, or they was arresting you. You wasn't able to just get up and just go, man. So, you know, I just wanted to just touch on this, man. I pray that the lesson was edifying with that. Come here, Charlotte.